I've been woodworking for many years and some people have come to me and asked me to teach them and knowing where to start in woodworking is quite difficult unless you have a system and my system is to start with pieces of wood, some very basic hand tools that you may already have and a few pieces of wood. I've got two pieces of beech and I've got a piece of pine. We're going to make a spatula and I've put that one aside just to say that I can use pine if I want to because it's so readily available. But most hardwoods will work. Look for straight grained wood. I've picked out some nice straight grained wood here. We'll start with the layout here because this is very important. I've got a template but I'm going to lay mine out without the template and I'm going to show you how I do it because you have to start somewhere and if you're making a template you even have to make that too and lay that out as well. My blank is 11 inches long, it's two and a quarter, just over two and a quarter wide and it's nine sixteenths, no it's yeah nine sixteenths thick. So we'll start with finding the center of this piece of wood. So we're going for five and a half roughly. This is not critical and I'm going to come down from the top three quarters of an inch to make a little crosshair there and at this far end this is the end of the handle I'm going to come one inch and I'm going to join those two lines together like that and that's going to give me a tapered handle like that. It makes a good grip. We're going to be making this handle oval. So from the end of the piece of wood, we're going to measure four inches. And that's, these are rough guidelines, four inches, make a, a line across. That's going to be the start of my arc and this is going to represent the bottom this point on the spatula right here so I'm working upside down from you but I'm just going to use my my hand now the important thing is not to make this too sharp because it's much easier to clean out afterwards there's my shape that's what I wanted the same for here start about half an inch down something like that and somewhere along the bottom See, I just got my elbow is resting on the bench and I start swinging this around like that. Now, if you're making your template, you can do it the same way. Then we're going to come from the end two and a half inches from the point of the spatula. We're coming two and a half inches, make a line across like that. And then about halfway up, Split that difference, so I've got one and three sixteenths in my case. So these are rough measurements, rough guidelines, and we're going to bore a hole. Now what I don't want you to do is make the spatula and then decide to bore the hole because you can have all that work into the spatula and when you're boring holes, sometimes the wood splits. Now to prevent the wood from splitting in this case, what I'm going to do is take a, a small drill about uh, uh, a one eighth of an inch, three millimeters, something like that. And I'm going to start that with a brad oil just to get the nose of the drill in like this. And I'm going to drill all the way through. And what this helps with, this will stop the snail of the bit, that's this part here, because it's tapered. When you start boring near an end like this, it can start to split. So let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to bore a three quarter inch hole through here. And I'm going to go halfway through. Now if you've got a sacrificial piece of wood, you can strap it on the other side, clamp it in the vise, and you can bore all the way through from one side. I like this method. I go and I go and I go until the point of the snail of the bit is protruding past that side. Then I turn it round and I come from the other side and the two meet right in the middle where the, the, the bit, the cutters on the outside have severed the fibres. So wait, watch for the breakthrough. There it is. So don't go bursting through. Look what's happened. We've got the whole board. We didn't get any splitting and we're going to be making these shapes next. So how do we do that? We've got a bandsaw, you can use a bandsaw, you can use a coping saw like I've got here. So let's start at the top here, start working around.
Now, of course, you can go all the way if you want to, but what I want to do is show you something else. This is something you may never have thought of before, but if you've got a good sharp chisel and a chisel hammer, you can start right on the top like this, like that. We've got that shape done in a heartbeat. Look what we've got already. Now we've got some shaping to do here. I might suggest you do the coping saw on this, but I might suggest something else too. Let's try this. Just take a small saw. Now you could use your coping saw. It will cut these just fine if you want to. Now I stop just above my line and I put these on the arc closer together. And these are about half an inch apart. Then I go for a wider distance because I don't need them so close. And this is fun, this is you, all your body is engaged with this, your mind, your senses, the sense of smell. You can smell the beach, I can smell the beach. If Whatever wood you're using will have a distinctive odor, usually. Now when I'm sawing here, watch this. I'm sawing, I'm pulling this against the saw stroke so it doesn't split off because it's near the end. Okay, let's see what do we do now. We've got to do some split cutting. This is what we call the stop cut method. I'm going to come here I'm going to go near to, I'm looking at the grain. Can you see how that split? So I'm working down near to the line. I'm actually working towards that cut. So here you can take out the bulk of the waste just like this. And now I start to follow the line a little bit closer, come up the cut like this and then work down up the cut and work down because the grain can change direction like that one nose dive just a little bit so I'm going more cautiously come up here high up split cut that wood out of the way now can you see that step that's because the grain is nose diving it's going down when I don't really want it to so I'm going to turn around and I'm going to come from this side. Now you won't be able to see the lines I'm working to. Bevel down on your, on your chisel. Can you see this is the bevel? The bevel is facing down. And I start chopping. Just like that. And now I'm not down to my line. So now I've, I'm just above my line. I work down into that scallop. And I start working along the handle now with the bevel down and I'm following the grain, following that grain. And I've, I've got my rough shape. Look at this, it's already coming together, this beautiful spatula. Okay, now then, what we're gonna do now, we're going to go with the bevel up and we're going to pair cut down here and we just leave it. I'm going bevel down now to get into the cove. And that's the shaping done. What do I do now? It's still got a few little stair steps in there. You can take a rasp of any kind. And if you don't have a rasp, I'm gonna show you what you can do. I'm using a rasp. Just to even out the stair steps. But you can take a piece of sandpaper and wrap it round either a broom handle like this and you can work that surface just like that and you can get that surface nice and crisp. What we're going to do next is I have got this example here. This is a rounded back and that's what I want when I'm scooping the dough mix out of the bowl. I want this, to, that's what this spatula is for. So we're going to do some shaping now. We can shape by making a pencil line about whoo, halfway. Let's go halfway first. 
on there. Can you see about halfway and the, the same distance onto this side? Just use your finger as a pencil guide. And now we're going to take the spokes out. This is the fun, the fun tool that everybody should buy as a first tool for their children. And we're going to start shaping this. We're going to go to, we're just putting a bevel on here now. This is beech, this is beech wood. And beech wood is very traditional for cooking utensils. I put the bevel on, I come around this corner now, follow the bend, and I'm working to my line. Like this. Now up here, you're gonna find that's going to break away if you're not careful, so it's better to come upwards like this. Like that. So we've no breakout on this edge, it's wonderful. Now what I'm gonna do is bring it up out of the vise a little bit, and I'm gonna start feathering this in to round it. So I'm making a round over with my spoke shave. This is a bit like peeling potatoes, really. Not much different. A little bit more. And I come onto this end. The end is the hardest part. And this is where you might consider another tool. And another tool might be a rasp. So we work around there, make it nice and even. And we've got a series of flats there that we might want to take out. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to bring in another tool. This is called a, a rasp. And we call and we can work these round areas with the rasp, just like this. And this is wonderful for learning about the grain and what the direction of the grain, which way to cut, things like that. And that's why I consider this a very good beginner project for anybody who wants to start woodworking. You can hold it like this, as long as you're careful, but the vise gives you the security you want. Once you've got that done, you can use another tool. This is just a basic flat file, and the flat file will even out the surface, the coarse cuts from the rasp, that's how we make that part. Now we've got to do the handle. The handle is the best bit. If you take your pencil and go one third from this face and one third from this face, one third under here and one third here, just roughly. This isn't an exact science, it doesn't matter. And this top edge like that, we're going to start shaping this. Now there's lots of ways to do this. We can just use the rasp, but the spoke shave works best. And if the spoke shave is supervised, if you've got young children, if you want them to do this, you just have to watch them. Keep your eye on them. They've got both hands on the handles. So I'm pushing, I'm learning to read the grain. I was going against the grain when I was pulling I turn around and go the other way. This is wonderful for learning about grain. So I've got a bevel on both sides, on the underside. I do the same. Of course, I'm going to hit into that curve down there. But even, it, even with just the bevel on, this is really a very comfortable handle. Oh, I've got to go the other way. She's stroking the cat backwards. Okay, we've got those uh, quadrants, those quarters now. We're going to start working up. I'm going against the grain, so I change direction. I knew from last time that I'd have to change and go in this direction. So there is your handle. The underside has already got the oval shape you're looking for, I'm looking for. Same here. And we just work, 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 work. Now, what I haven't told you is that I don't have my cutter evenly sp uh, distanced from the cutting edge. I've got this side coarse and this side is barely protruding. So if I want to, I can take a coarse cut on this side 
and move over to this side for a fine cut. It saves me having to do any adjusting. This is a wonderful way to get anybody involved in woodworking. So all the way around, I've got my handle shaped, it's perfect. I love it, I love it, I love it. So I've got to do this one so you can see a little bit. Now sometimes you can use the spoke shave like this and sometimes you can't. Sometimes it's just too tight. If you can't, just wrap a piece of sandpaper around a piece of wood, a round piece of wood and you can go in and you can do that just fine. That's basically the shaping, we've, we've got the shaping done. I want to strengthen this corner and to do that I bring the spoke shave along this side at 45 degrees and just make it nice and angled. That's a great way of dealing with that. And then this last bit is just to refine this edge here. And what we've got to do next is maybe we can scrape it. I've got a steel scraper here. This works perfectly for shaping the handle and getting rid of the hard edges. But if you don't have a scraper, what would you do? You'd just use sandpaper. That's really all I would do. This is a, a very good first project for anybody to learn woodworking. But we're also learning about how the grain works. And that's one of the fundamentals of woodworking is how does the grain change direction and what do I do to counter that? So this will help you to start working with the grain so there's my spatula close to being finished. All I've got to do now is work on the sanding, give it a little bit more refinement, perhaps a little bit of scraping, a little bit of sanding. And when I'm done, what do I do to make this look beautiful? I just apply any of the cooking vegetable oils that you use in your everyday cooking at home. And that is how to make a spatula. <laughs>